This video is about an awesome new feature in CSS. I love making videos about CSS, genuinely. I don't get a lot of the hate around CSS. Personally, I feel like if you just learn the features that are coming out with native CSS, then you don't need to mess about learning Tailwind or any other stuff like that. You can do a huge amount of very cool and very performant front-end stuff just in raw CSS these days, it's great. And the feature that I want to show you today is this on the MDM Web Docs website. It's called CSS Container Queries. Check this out. So CSS container queries look a little bit like media queries. A media query will say that an element is styled in a certain way if the browser is a certain size. So you can say if it's portrait mode, then style in a different way. Well, container queries say style an element in a certain way if its container is a certain thing. So here's a little example right, of what I mean. Here we've got a card inside a narrow container and you can see that is stacked vertically. And this is the same card inside a wide container that's stacked horizontally. So these are the same item, but based on what the container is, they're stacked in different ways. So it's almost like this is the mobile view and this is the desktop view, but we haven't actually switched between mobile and desktop. We've done that based on the shape of the container. So to explain how they work, I've created a basic index.html file here, and I've put a bunch of styles in here. So I said, if there's a style.container, then I'm going to set this special new property on it that says container type is inline size. And we'll come on to that in a second. But we're going to have two types of containers. We're going to have a container, and we're going to have a wide container. You'll notice the wide container is 600 pixels wide, and the normal container is 300 pixels wide. And then there's a bunch of other styles on here. We've styled some card items and stuff like that. So if I start using these in the code, if I'll, uh, I'll create a header saying card inside narrow container, and then I'll create a div with a class of container. So that's our narrow container up here, the one that's 300 pixels wide. Um, and inside that, we're just going to put some stuff. So we'll put a card, um, and that's just going to have an image in it. Well, I'll use a placeholder image from placeholder.go. Um, and we'll also just put a little div in there that says this is the content of the card. Let me just uh, delete this. Um, and our card's just going to have a little title and it's going to have a p tag inside it that says this is a sample card inside a narrow container. The layout stacks vertically and we'll see that in a second. So that's our card inside a narrow container. If I refresh that on the right hand side here, you can see we've got a title and we've got a little p tag and it's stacked vertically because it's inside a narrow container. Now, if I go ahead and create this exact same card, this is pretty much exact same HTML, and all we're going to do this time, I'll put it inside a wide container. So this time I'm going to put that inside a class called wide container, and everything else inside this is going to be the same. So it'll be a card, it'll have an image, which will be a placeholder of 300 by 200, and I'll have a div called card content, and little title, same card title, and exactly the same, this is a sample card, but this time inside a wide container. The layout is side by side. So if I refresh this then, because we haven't actually applied the container um, media query yet, you can see this is exactly the same as this one. It's stretching to fill its container, except that this time the container was a lot wider. Now what we want to achieve is we want to say that because this is in a wider container, this doesn't look particularly nice. This one looks nice and nice. This is something you might see on a website. This one looks a bit horrible. So we're going to put a media query or a special container query onto this second card that says if it's in this wide container, then stack it horizontally, show it as a row. So the way to do that is head back up into the CSS here and we're going to use at container. So I'll add a new line at the bottom of my CSS that says at container. And if the container is a minimum width of 500 pixels, so our 600 pixel container will qualify for that, then we're going to style that card content. We're going to style the card to be flex direction row. That's literally all we're going to do. We're also going to align the items in the center because if you're flex directing stuff in a row, then you probably want to do that. We're also going to make the image um, slightly smaller, so we don't want it to be the full width anymore. Um, and that's basically all we need. So by doing this, I've said, if this card is inside a container and a container is defined by something that's got container type on it, which is part of this document I've got on the right hand side here, um, it will say you have to set container type to inline size. So if this card is inside a container with a minimum width of 500 pixels, then make it a row and a line item center and also make the image only 200 pixels wide. So if I refresh that, we can see what it looks like. There we go. So we can see this card title now here is as a flex row and this one is a flex column. And um, we can change things around here by maybe making this so that it has to be 800 pixels. If we did that, then it would go back to being a column. But then if we made that container sort of 850 pixels or something, so we make the container 850 pixels, 
then it will go back to being a row again. So this is just a really, really cool way of styling um, elements in a different way, just like you would do with a media query, but instead of based on the width of the viewport, it's based on the width of the compare and, um, of the parent container. Now I do lastly just want to restress that it's really important to understand that with container queries, not every element is a container by default, and that trips up a lot of people the first time I try to use it. You actually have to tell the browser that this element here is a container by setting container type to inline size like this. And without that, your container queries just won't do anything. They'll basically silently fail, and that can be really confusing. So before you can write any container queries, you need to set a container type on the parent element that you want it to respond to. So think of it like giving your component a measuring tape, and until you set container type, it doesn't even know what size it is. So you can also optionally give your containers names as well, and that becomes really useful if you've got nested containers and you want to be a lot more specific about which container you're targeting. But honestly, for most simple layouts, just setting this container type to inline size is enough to get started, and it's a really, really interesting way of using this. So when would you actually want to use container queries? Well, the biggest use case is when you're building reusable components that might live inside different layouts. So I mentioned you might have one of these cards that you then want to render in a side panel. So that's really like, you know, a sidebar or a dashboard panel or a little info widget or something like that. Anywhere where you don't know if the parent layout is going to be the same sort of size, then it can be really useful if you're building a design system or component library, because it lets your components really adapt to where you're using the components. And you can make changes, not just to the Flexbox, but basically anything inside that component, just like you would with a media query. So you don't have to design like mobile versions of your components or desktop versions. You can just design a small container version of your component and then a big container version of it. And that's a much, much better mental model when you're thinking about components. So it just lets you um, build these things and think of vaguely how they're going to be fitting into stuff, what sort of size they're going to be fitting into. So it's a small shift in mindset, but that can make a huge difference once you start building things at scale, and it can make your components a lot smarter and a lot more resilient, and a lot easier to reuse diff across different parts of your app. So definitely go and check out the CSS Container Queries page. I'll put this question in the description below. If you've got any questions, pop a comment on my YouTube video below, or just send me an email. I'm james at trainsoco.com. Don't forget to check out my website. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.